Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bushnell Prairie City High School here in Bushnell, Illinois, as we get ready for sectional semifinal number two after a thrilling first game that saw the Illini Bluffs Tigers advance to the sectional championship game with a 53-46 win over Anawan. And this one gonna be just as good, if not better, as the A-Town Tornadoes will take on the Lewiston Indians here in game number two of the night here from Bushnell, Illinois. My name's Wyatt Reed on the call here, flying solo once again. And boy, I've been excited for this one since we found out who was going to be playing here in the sectional semifinals as I've been following this A-Town Tornado team most of the year, the home games at least watching a number of their games at home, and there were some good games, and there were some stinkers in there, but this team has done nothing but grow, and they are led by their star freshman, the star in the making. If you don't know the name, tonight might be a good night to get used to the name. Number one, Kennedy Quinn for the A-Town Tornadoes. She has been unbelievable, and she will try to lead her A-Town Tornadoes to a sectional semifinal win where they will try to take on Illini Bluffs, a team they've already beaten earlier in the season, but can't look forward to that one. They're gonna have their hands full with a Lewiston team that comes into this game red hot as they were able to knock off Havana in the regional championship game. And that is how they find themselves here. The crowd continuing to file in. This is going to be one of the loudest crowds I've seen all season long. And I'm looking forward to it. The fans are excited. We are excited here at TSSR. We appreciate you guys joining us here this evening. And feel free to get into the comments. My man Steve already in the comments here, reminding me as the A-Town broadcaster that I am, or at least was during the regular season, Haley Redding. She's also a star here at A-Town. You know, and I mentioned it during the last A-Town girls game that I did. If it weren't for Kennedy Quinn, she would be the star of this team. And Coach Brent Dugan agreed with me when I said that earlier in the season. I mean, she is incredible. And in a game against Anawan earlier in the year, she had no points at half and finished with a game-high 24. That's just how good she is. She can go off at a moment's notice. And uh, so it's kind of a two-headed monster for the A-Town Tornadoes. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't seen much of the Lewiston girls this season. But a team coming in this red hot, it's a five versus six matchup. The A-Town Tornadoes are the sixth seed, taking on the five seed Lewiston. I believe that's how it is. If it's the other way around, somebody please let me know in the comments. Lewiston the five, A-Town the six. That's what I'm looking at right now. Starting lineup's about to be announced as we've got the National Anthem. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today, and make your voice heard. Well, I've always had an interest in the medical field, and then growing up, I actually went through physical therapy myself for an injury, and that got me back to playing my sports and the activities that I loved. So seeing that firsthand, I got to see how much physical therapy could really benefit others. 
Welcome back. TSSR Game Time Live brought to you by MDH. As we're getting through starting lineups here as we speak. I'll get the starting lineups here for both sides once we get them all announced. But I'm going to write them down here. Bryce in the comment section saying it is uh, Lewis Town, not Lewis Tun. I feel like that's just a preference, honestly. I was told the people who live in Lewiston tell, call it Lewis Town, and the people who are outsiders like myself call it Lewis Tun. But I'll do my best here as we move along here. Starting lineups again being announced as we speak, and I'll get those starting lineups to you here once we find out everybody who is in that starting lineup. All right, so here you go, Lewistown. Uh, their starting lineup gonna look like this. It's number three, Landry Smith. Number 12, McKenna Johnson. Number 14, Abby Weigand. Uh, number 20, or number 20, excuse me, is Lexi Cruzen. And number 21 is Jolie McLaughlin. For A-Town, their starting lineup looks pretty similar. If you've watched an A-Town game, you know their starting lineup. The A-Town Tornadoes led by their star freshman, number one, Kennedy Quinn. Emma Gunther getting the start, number 11, number 14, Caden Quinn, number 15, Haley Redding, and number 24, Taylor Ford. The tip-off is won by A-Town. They will have the ball moving left to right in their home white uniforms, and let's get underway. Semifinal number two starting up here on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Kennedy Quinn in the corner gets it to her cousin, Caden Quinn, and a tie-up, and that'll be an early turnover here as folks still filing in here in the comments. Michelle cheering on the Lady Tornadoes. Michelle, uh, another Michelle, two Michelles uh, rooting for Lewistown. Not a preference, it's said how it's spelled, Lewistown. And there's a right wing three on the way, so we're getting those jitters out here. I've heard it both ways too, Greg. I grew up with both ways. I've said Lewistown my whole life. And I grew up not too far from here. I actually grew up outside of Avon, so I'm well aware of Lewiston or Lewistown. Baseline drive, Ford nearly threw it away. Gets it to Quinn, though, up top, left wing. Into the corner, it's Gunther. Gunther steps on the baseline, and another turnover for the A-Town Tornadoes. But that's not going to be the main concern here tonight. The main concern is going to be this basketball game, red hot teams, the A-Town Tornadoes come in on this, uh, having beaten some major talent as a turnaround shot, laid up and in, it's Lexi Cruzen able to get the first basket of the ball game for Lewistown. And they lead it here 2-0 early in our first quarter, 7.52 to go in quarter number one as it's kicked left corner, Taylor Ford drives, kicks it back out, Gunther. Gunther kicks it left wing three on the way. Haley Redding, that one didn't even hit the rim as the rebound effort for Taylor Ford goes out of bounds. 6.40 to go here, first quarter. 2-0 Indians with the lead. Good to have folks along here as we move along here. The winner of this game will take on Illini Bluffs, who was victorious over Anawan earlier this evening here in Bushnell. And a whistle and another tie-up. Possession arrow will go back to A-Town. Six and a half to go. A-Town with the basketball. So A-Town led by a two-headed monster. That is Kennedy Quinn, who has the basketball right now, and Haley Redding, number 15, who's standing top of your screen, coming towards the ball now, but Taylor Ford with it. Free throw line, gets it into the corner. Caden Quinn, wide open right corner three. That one's no good, and the rebound tipped out of bounds, and it will go to Lewistown. Indians will take it right to left in their baby blue uniforms with red trim, red numbers, and letters. Those are good looking uniforms, I will say. Six minutes to go here, opening quarter. A-Town struggling on offense, driving a whistle and an offensive foul is called. So another turnover for Lewistown. A-Town with the basketball. A-Town in their last game against Weathersfield only scored one point in the opening quarter and yet we're still able to get the job done. Here's Kennedy Quinn all the way to the basket, lays it up and in. What a play by Kennedy Quinn, splitting the defense and laying that one up. We're tied at two, 5.40 to go here, first quarter. 
Indians moving the ball around right wing, kicks it up top, driving. That is Landry Smith. She gets it back, nearly lost it. Into the corner it goes. And still with the basketball. Cross court pass is intercepted. Here comes Kennedy Quinn. She loses the handle for a second. Gets to the baseline, puts up the shot. That one blocked away. A good play there defensively by the Indians as Abby Weigand able to play some straight up defense there without fouling. Indians do have one foul here, so I'll write that down here on my score sheet. There's the top of the key. Three on the way for Kennedy Quinn. That one short rebound, offensive rebound, back to the Tornadoes. This A-Town team really knows how to rebound the basketball. They're calling it Columbia Blue. Thanks for the correction there, Michelle. I've always known that as Baby Blue, but I like Columbia Blue there as well. Inside it goes, Caden Quinn, or that's Kennedy Quinn, to Caden, right, wide open corner three, that one short, offensive rebound. Kennedy Quinn goes to the basket, lays it up, no good, but a foul. Oh, the rebounding has been really good here so far for A-Town. 4.45 to go here in the first. We're tied at two. A gigantic crowd filling in the stands here at Bushnell Prairie City High School. Good to have them in attendance. Good to have you joining us here on TSSR. First free throws up and good. Kennedy Quinn with all three points for A-Town here in the early going. Avery Stiegel will check in. Or Asa Stiegel. Nope, it's Avery. I always get her and her brother's name mixed up, and I don't know why. Second free throw is up and good. I've been doing their games all year, and I still get her and her brother's name mixed up. Anyway, McLaughlin gets it left side to Johnson. That one's tipped and stolen away. Nice play defensively by A-Town. They'll bring it back left to right. Four and a half to go here. First quarter, Quinn. Goes to the right side, inside pass to Stiegel. Back up top, Caden Quinn, wide open top of the key. Three, that one's up and good. It's Caden Quinn, and a timeout is called by the Indians. A 7-0 run for the A-Town Tornadoes after a 2-0 start for the Indians. And they need to talk this one over, a 30-second timeout. We're back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re, uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. Welcome back to TSSR Game Time Live brought to you by MDH as Lewistown needing a timeout, a 7-0 run by the A-Town Tornadoes after a 2-0 start for Lewistown. And they desperately are looking for answers here. Five versus six, the unlikely folks to make their way. That one is taken away by Quinn, and a foul is called. We'll see who they give that foul on. They'll give it on number 14, Abby Weigand. More help in the comments, which, hey, I appreciate the help in the comments, y'all. Michelle uh, correcting me on a name, Lexi Cruzan, like Van, not Cruz uh, in, like I said earlier, so my apologies there. As a, another foul is called. And that is already the fourth foul on Lewistown here in the early going. Michelle agreeing with me and saying that those are pretty sweet uniforms. I agree. Well done, Lewistown. Wiegand, Casey helping me out. Lewistown wanting a foul. There's a left elbow shot by... Redding, that's no good. A-Town already in the bonus here for the last three minutes and 40 seconds here of this quarter. There's top of the key, three on the way. That one, no good. Nice rebound there for Emma Gunther. Coming up on three and a half to go here in the first. Driving all the way to the basket and kicking it back out. Here comes Redding, shot goes up. That one, no good, but it's an offensive foul anyway. Appreciate you there, Michelle. 7-2, A-Town with the lead, 3.28 to go. Feel free to get into the comments. Hey, I'm all, always open for corrections, criticisms, whatever you want. I like hearing from the audience out there. We got a lot of people watching here. Winner of this game takes on Illini Bluffs in the sectional championship. Top of the key, there's a three on the way for Johnson. That one's up and good. McKenna Johnson, her first basket of the ball game. 
And the Indians are right back in it. They trail by two, 3.05 to go here, first quarter. Kennedy Quinn gets it left side, Avery Stiegel. Up top to Gunther as we're past three minutes to go now. Caden Quinn dribbles to the free throw line. Nice pass, Avery Stiegel cuts to the basket. That one's no good, and the rebound tipped out and won by the Indians. Here they come, right to left on your screen. Good ball movement here by the Indians. They drive inside, extra pass, kicks it into the corner. Little turnaround shot, that one's no good for Jolie McLaughlin. Offensive rebound, McLaughlin, or excuse me, that is Wiegand. And that one out of bounds, it'll stay here. Lewis down will have it, 2.32 to go. Trying to get the ball inbound are the Indians. That one nearly over the head of McKenna Johnson. She was able to stop it just enough to keep it, keep it right in front of her. Left side it goes to McKenna Johnson. Up top now to Lexi Cruzan. Got it right that time. Nice pass to the baseline. Oh, losing the handle and it is taken away by the Tornadoes. Here's Haley Redding with it in the corner. 2.10 to go here first quarter. Seven to five our score. Into the corner, there's Stiegel. That's a two-pointer on the way. That one banked around, no good. Rebound, out of bounds. It'll go to the Indians. Two minutes to go here in the first. Great first matchup as Illini Bluffs knocks off Anawan, 53-46. And they await the winner of this one. Inside it goes, backing down, kicks it back out to Johnson, right wing, up top. Good ball movement, left wing, corner three on the way, that's up and good. Abby Wiegand has got a three, and now Lewistown has the lead. 1.35 to go here in the first, eight to seven our score. Kennedy Quinn gets it to Redding. Redding loses the handle for a moment, gets it back, gets it to Gunther, Gunther stops. Kicks it to Caden Quinn, and Caden walked with it. Another turnover for A-Town. Taylor Ford will check in for Caden Quinn. Taylor Ford, even though she's not the tallest player on the A-Town Tornadoes team, she is definitely one of the best defenders on the floor. A timeout is called by A-Town. It is a 30-second timeout. We'll take 15. We'll be back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Dry needling is where you insert a filiform needle into a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, um, sometimes a bone, and it promotes blood flow and circulation so that it heals that particular painful area. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call here this evening as we're at the 120 mark of quarter number one. A-Town and Lewistown in a battle here early, a one-point game. Back and forth we go. And the Indians will look to extend their lead. Biggest lead they've had here is a two-point lead as that one goes inside, left-handed layup. That one's no good. Redding comes away with a rebound for A-Town. 105 to go here, first quarter. Kennedy Quinn, she's got it. She's gonna turn on the speed, go all the way to the baseline, gets it to Ford, and a bump and a foul is called. Taylor Ford will now go to the free throw line as that is the fifth team foul on the Indians. Lexi Cruzan, uh, excuse me. Maybe I'll get it right by the end of the game here. <laughs> a one man crew though. There's a lot being thrown at me here all at once, so I'm doing the best I can. Bear with me, y'all. 56 and a half seconds to go first quarter. As the first free throw on the way for Taylor Ford, that one rattles home, and we're tied at eight. One thing I will say, covering the A-Town Tornadoes as much as I have throughout the season, free throws have certainly been an issue for them. But the start of the free throw game so far, off to a good start as Taylor Ford goes two for two. 53 seconds to go here in the first. A-Town with a one-point lead. Getting it left side, McKenna Johnson up top. Gets it to Wiegand. Inside pass, there's a foul. That'll be just the, I believe that might be the second foul on A-Town. I failed to update the first foul, so the second foul on A-Town here in the quarter. Still got a few more to give with 44.7 seconds to go. Returning from 
Caden Quinn checks back into the game. She'll check in for Avery Stiegel. Avery Stiegel, just a sophomore for A-Town. This is a team that, when I talked to head coach Dugan earlier in the season, he says this is a team a year ahead of schedule. There's the top of the key, three on the way. That one rattles halfway down. It rattled out and rattled back in. Lexi Cruzan, she gets that one to go, and it's the biggest lead, or tied again for the biggest lead of the day here for Lewistown. They lead by two, 20 seconds to go first quarter. Kennedy Quinn, top of the key, crosses over, kicks it into the corner. Redding, wide open three in the corner, trying to answer. That's no good. Offensive rebound goes to Gunther. Top of the key, it's Kennedy Quinn with eight seconds to go. A three is no good. Rebound, fought for, tipped out of bounds. Where's it going? It's going to go back to Lewistown. Four seconds to go here, quarter number one. The Indians will try to draw something up. Anna Servin checks into the game. She's the one girl on the A-Town roster I did not write down on my score sheet, and I don't know why. Inbounds pass, Lewiston gets it. Gets it, there's those three, right wing at the buzzer, that one just grazed off the front of the iron. A good look by Wiegand, but that will end our first quarter. What a great first quarter. Let's get three more quarters just like that. 11 to nine, Lewistown with the lead. We'll be back after this TSSR Game Time Live brought to you by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call as we get ready to start quarter number two. Lewistown with the lead over the A-Town Tornadoes, a very competitive back and forth first quarter. A-Town led on a couple of occasions. Lewistown coming back and leading. Biggest lead of the game so far has been A-Town by five. They were on a 7-0 run to start the game after Lewistown got the first point of the basketball game. A 7-0 run, but that was quickly wiped away by a good run by Lewistown. Inside pass, puts up the wild shot. That one, no good. Offensive rebound and a foul called. Lexi Cruzan, she will earn another possession for the Indians. Haley Redding picks up her second foul, so some early foul trouble here for A-Town. She'll stay in the ball game. A nice pass, cutting to the basket, laying that one up and in. It's Lexi Cruzan getting that one to go. She's up to seven points, and it's the biggest lead of the game so far for Lewistown. They've got a four-point lead, 13 to nine. Three, uh, excuse me, 7.35 to go here. Second quarter, inside pass to Redding. Loses the handle, a lot of contact, and a foul called. Haley Redding will go to the line as both teams now committing a foul here in this quarter. And boy, that's a big foul. Lexi Cruzan just picked up her third foul here in the first half. She's the team leader in scoring. She's got seven points. And that'll be the last time we see her here in the first half. She checks out. Boy, that is a huge loss for the Indians. First free throw is good by Redding. Second one also good. Haley Redding goes two for two at the free throw line. And we're back to a two point game. McKenna Johnson up top. It goes to Landry Smith. Right side to Wiegand. And now into the game, it's Isabella Bonney as out of bounds off the hands of A Town. 7.15 to go here, first half trip to the sectional championship game on the line. In it goes, left side, driving the baseline. Instead, up top, nice pass, dribbles it off her foot. That's taken away by A-Town. Caden Quinn now with it. She nearly traveled with it. Gets into the hand, however, of Kennedy Quinn. Not the best pass in the world. Gets inside Taylor Ford, puts it up, no good, but a foul. 
A-Town might have got away with one there. It wasn't the best pass from Kennedy Quinn. She's one of the best passers, too, as just a freshman. Taylor Ford to the free throw line. She's two for two from the line already, and the old announcer's curse misses the first. 6.55 left here for or first half. Second free throw, that one goes in. So she's, she's three for four from the line. And we've got a one point ball game here. Back and forth we go. Indians versus the Tornadoes as that one tipped into the backcourt. McKenna Johnson goes back to get it. Johnson spins, free throw line. Loses the handle, whistling up, foul is called. A-Town not a fan of that call. I will say up here in the media area, didn't look like much, but you never know. Might have been a grab there. Avery Stiegel checks back in. Indians with the possession. Driving inside to the baseline, losing the handle. Lewiston turns it over. Now Kennedy Quinn loses the handle. That one out of bounds and back-to-back -back turnovers. So it'll be Indian basketball. 6.31 to go here, first half. <clears throat> losing the voice here partially, so bear with me. We had a wild first game. Off to a wild start in this one. That one partially blocked away by Avery Stiegel. Here comes Kennedy Quinn the other way. Gets it right side, Emma Gunther. Kicks it into the corner to Quinn. Quinn loses the handle and a double dribble. Another turnover for A-Town. Kind of just feels like, and if you're an A-Town fan watching this one, feels like Kennedy Quinn might be pushing it just a little bit. Michelle reminding me of a great moment we had. I think it was back in A-Town against Princeville. Was that during the Princeville game, Michelle? Haley Redding passing over 1,000 points in her career. That was a fun moment to be a part of. Nice pass. That one laid up and in. If Isabella Bonney getting that one to go. I had to make sure the number was correct. Indians back up by three. 5.50 to go here, first half. Kennedy Quinn. Oh, a nice pass inside. Avery Stiegel lays it up. No good, but a foul. Now, just for you folks out there who are looking at the uniforms and wondering why Lewiston is in the home slot, I didn't know who was going to be home or away. I thought A-Town would be away because they're the lower seed, but apparently it's the top team in the bracket gets the home uniforms. That's why A-Town's in their home whites. Stiegel misses the first free throw. So when it comes to scorekeeping as a lane violation, and that free throw will not count for A-Town. But usually when it comes to scorekeeping, the second team on the scoreboard is the home team. Technically, A-Town is the home team. And I goofed, right wing three on the way. That one is short, offensive rebound. Johnson lays it up, no good, but a foul. Steve saying got off to a slow start last game. You're, you're right on that one, Steve. Just one point in quarter number two, or quarter number one, excuse me. Yep, the A-Town Tornadoes somehow able to pull away against Weathersfield. First free throw is good by McKenna Johnson. Lewistown did not need to bite their fingernails in the last one. They had no trouble with Havana in their regional championship game. 5.35 to go here first half. A-Town trailing by four with the basketball. Kennedy Quinn gets a screen. Into the corner it goes. Gunther pump fakes up top. Ford loses the handle, gets it to Quinn. There's Kennedy Quinn cutting to the basket, loses the handle. Lewiston will take over. Landry Smith, nice pass inside, cutting to the basket, laying it up and in. Jolie McLaughlin, and it's the biggest lead of the ball game here for the Indians. They lead by six, 5.05 to go, first half. Quinn, a right wing three on the way. She'll shoot, that's no good. Rebound comes out to the Indians. Smith kicks it, gets it to Bonnie. And that one tipped out of bounds off the hands of the Tornadoes. So the Indians will have it. 4.47 to go here, first half. 
And that's something I've noticed about the Tornadoes, back to Steve's comment there a little while ago. That's something I've noticed in the games that I've covered. A-Town, the last couple of games, especially that Anawan game, We, re if you're an A-Town fan, and you remember the game where they were down by nine points in the second half against Anawan and came back and pushed that game to double overtime and eventually got the win against the Bravettes. The Bravettes losing here tonight. As that one goes up top, McKenna Johnson, a wide open three, top of the key, that's up and good, it's McKenna Johnson. Lewistown is rolling here on offense. They lead by nine, 420 to go, first half. 21 to 12. Kennedy Quinn goes to the baseline, stops, turns around. Oh, that one halfway down and out. Offensive rebound, no good. Offensive rebound again. There's Redding, right wing goes to Gunther. There's Quinn, left wing, wide open three. That one's short. Rebound comes out to the Indians. Trailing, or ahead by nine, excuse me. Nice little right-handed hook shot. That one's no good by Landry Smith. And a rebound comes out to the Tornadoes. 3.45 to go first half. Kennedy Quinn in the corner. Gets it right wing to Emma Gunther. Free throw line, Kennedy Quinn gets it. Caden Quinn, open corner three, that's no good. Offensive rebound though, Avery Stiegel. Good crowd on hand as that one is tipped. Quinn gets it back, Redding now with it. Gets it right side, Caden Quinn. She gets a screen. Inside pass, Haley Redding puts up a shot. That one no good, a lot of contact, no call. Rebound comes out to the Indians. Nine point lead for the Indians, 3.05 to go. There's McKenna Johnson up top, top of the key. There's a three on the way, Landry Smith. That's no good, rebound goes to Gunther. Offense has kind of slowed down for both sides here. 2.50 to go, first half. Kennedy Quinn gets a couple of screens. She goes right side, kicks it to Gunther. Now to Redding, right side. Inside pass to Kennedy Quinn. She backs down, kicks it into the corner. Redding, a wide open corner three on the way. That one is good. It's Haley Redding. She's up to five points, and the lead is down to six. Top of the key it goes McLaughlin. Right side to Bonnie. Now Smith, there's a three, top of the key, and answer, it's Landry Smith. Back and forth on threes we go, 2.08 to go, 24-15. Right side, Caden Quinn under two minutes to go, first half. Quinn picks up her dribble, kicks it up top to Gunther. A whistle, offensive foul is called. And the Indians will take over. 153 left here in the first half. A-Town looks exhausted. Kennedy Quinn tried to call a timeout, couldn't get it in, because the ball was inbounded. A-Town just looks exhausted as a travel is called. And Quinn looking to the bench to head coach Brent Dugan, and he's not biting, he just says, let's go. A-Town has committed four fouls, by the way. So Lewistown is in the bonus. Quinn gets a screen. She drives all the way to the baseline, splits the double team, but she is fouled. And Kennedy Quinn going to the line where she'll shoot two. But Kennedy Quinn and Emma Gunther, just before that last possession, had their hands on their knees, bent over, trying to get a little bit of air. It is hot here in this arena. I will say that as the free throws up and good. Kennedy Quinn is up to five points. A bunch of people in this gym has made it really, really warm. I will give them that. But you kind of have to expect that in a sectional semifinal as the second one's up and good. Back to a seven point game, 27, or 24, 17, excuse me. Both teams now in the bonus. As it goes to McKenna Johnson, a lot of contact there, no call. Right wing three on the way, Landry Smith, that's no good. Rebound bouncing around, ends up back in the hands of the Indians. That one no good, and the rebound goes to Kennedy Quinn. One ten to go here, first half. Kicks it into the corner, Haley Redding, a wide open three. That one's short, 
Rebound goes to Gunther, top of the key. Kennedy Quinn, she'll shoot a three. That one off the back of the rim. And fighting for the rebound, A-Town comes up with it. Haley Renning puts it back up, no good, but a foul. And that'll be the Indians' fifth foul here in the quarter. Redding to the line, where she hit a couple of free throws here earlier in the game, and she gets that one to go. She's up to six points. Tied for the team lead. The lead's down to six for Lewistown. 57 and a half seconds to go. Redding misses the second one. Offensive rebound goes to Caden Quinn. Right wing, Redding gonna shoot again, and she hits again! Haley Redding has got nine, a big three! Makes it a three-point game as we approach halftime. Johnson kicks it up top, Landry Smith. She picks up the dribble, kicks it cross court, gets it to Wiegand. Shot goes up, a lot of contact, no call. Offensive, or fighting for the offensive rebound, but the possession arrow will give it to A-Town. 33.5 seconds to go here, quarter number two. Boy, we are in for a good one here. Kennedy Quinn has got it, 30 seconds. Stiegel gets it right side to Ford. <clears throat> 20 seconds, right side Caden Quinn to Kennedy Quinn. Back at the logo, 15 to shoot. They'll set up the play, looking for the final shot. 10 seconds, Kennedy Quinn kicks it to Caden. Into the corner it goes, Gunther, a wide open three on the way, that one rattles, oh, the lucky bounce! It goes for Emma Gunther! And that ends a wild first half. They say it's a two, her foot was on the line, but even so, what a first half of basketball. That pulls the Tornadoes to within one, as we'll recap the first half and Get you ready for the second half. A trip to the sectional championship on the line. We're back after this. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had a, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. What a ball game through two quarters of basketball, and we are pretty much right back where we started. A one-point ball game, the Lewiston Indi Lewistown Indians leading the A-Town Tornadoes here in this sectional semifinal, a battle of six versus five. A-Town the sixth seed, the five seed A-Town. And boy, this is just as good if not better than the first game we got here at Bushnell Prairie City High School, a game that ended up with an Illini Bluffs 53-46 final score. So Illini Bluffs awaiting the winner of this one, and boy, oh boy, what a, uh, what a great back and forth. Either team that wins this one is going to be a handful for Illini Bluffs. Illini Bluffs, though, played some really excellent defense in that ball game. So it's going to be a great matchup no matter how you look at it in the sectional semifinal, uh, the sectional final, excuse me, coming up on Thursday, which we will have here on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. So you can uh, make sure you set the notification to come on back here Thursday night for the championship game, whoever you're rooting for, or if you just want to watch some great basketball. Steve in the comments, great comeback. He is an A-Town fan, and uh, he uh, pointing out that the A-Town Tornadoes kind of looked a little slow, lethargic at times. They were down uh, by uh, nine points, 21 to 12, 
but they finished off the half on a 12 to three run and were able to cut that lead down to one. I think that run is correct. Three. Yep, no, no, excuse me, an 11 to three run. Okay, I knew my math was off there. So it was an 11 to three run to end the first half and eight down now back to within one point. Lewistown led by Lexi Cruzan as she finished the first half with seven points, although she picked up her third foul in that first half and sat a majority of that second quarter. Now, a majority of that second quarter, she, they did pretty well without her, but the problem was, of course, near the end, you could kind of feel that they missed her presence, the ability to score. So Lexi Cruzan will come back in, and uh, we'll see how she does leading the way with seven points. Also, McKenna Johnson with seven points as... Uh, that is time for the team lead there for the Indians. Three points for Abby Wiegand, three points for Landry Smith, two points for Jolie McLaughlin, and two points for Isabel Bonney. For A-Town, their leading scorer, Haley Redding. And as I mentioned in the pregame show, if it weren't for Kennedy Quinn being on this team, Haley Redding would easily be the star of this team. She passed the 1,000-point mark earlier this season in a game against Princeville. And, uh, you know, she would be the star had Kennedy Quinn not come into school this year as a freshman and just wowed everybody. Haley, you know, she also had 18 points uh, a, a game throughout the regular season. Kennedy finished with 21. So, I mean, either way you look at it, these two, the two-headed monster from A-Town, uh, I mean, they are very talented players. And Haley Redding showing off why she had nine first half points. Kendi Quinn with six first half points. It was three points for Emma Gunther, three points for Caden Quinn, and three points for Taylor Ford. That's actually two points for Emma Gunther because they marked that a two just before half. And that was a wild shot too by Emma Gunther in the corner. It bounced up what looked like a shot that had no chance, but it got the shooter's roll, they like to say, and ended up falling in just before the buzzer. But it was ruled a two, and we have a one-point ball game here, 24-23 after two quarters of basketball. Uh, let's see, we got folks in the comment section here. Braden, Braden was uh, helping me out yesterday during the boys game that I was doing in A-Town as uh, Braden actually got me the interview with Coach Dugan uh, that we did during the fourth quarter of that game of uh, the boys regional quarterfinal game. And we talked to Coach Dugan before kind of previewing this ball game and boy, his preview was right. They are a tough, tough bunch, but good to see Braden uh, in the comments section saying Kennedy, Kennedy Quinn needing to get hot. She's had some open looks, but you know, she's missed those open looks, so we'll see if she can maybe hit some of those shots here in the second half for A-Town. Um, and then they're kind of having a conversation. Bodie in the comments, uh, kind of talking back and forth now with Braden in the comments section. Always fun to see some folks uh, bouncing back and forth in the comments. Hey, it helps the algorithm, so continue that conversation, fellas. Good to have you guys in here. Good to have everybody along here. Feel free to get into the comment section. Your reaction to the first half, kind of your thoughts going into the second half, what needs to happen for your favorite team, and maybe even tell us how your team squares up against the Illini Bluffs, who is waiting the winner of this one, Anna, uh, beating Anawan, excuse me, Illini Bluffs did earlier tonight, 53 to 46. We're gonna take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the second half of basketball. Lewistown leads A-Town 24-23. Two more great quarters of basketball coming your way next as you're watching TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. 
At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call as we get ready to start quarter number three in the sectional semifinal. As the Lewistown Indians leading the Eight Town Tornadoes 24 23, two more quarters of basketball to determine who will move on to the sectional championship game, which will be played in this gym coming up on Thursday. A Town looking to get back into this one after trailing much of the first half. They led by five early in the game. However, Lewistown responded, took the lead, ended up leading by nine at one point. But then A Town finishing the first half on an 11 to three run. We'll see what the Indians and the Tornadoes have in store with two more quarters of basketball. Good to have you along here again. Feel free to Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section as we move along here in quarter number three. Lewis down, starting with the basketball, moving left to right as you look at your screen. My voice kind of struggling a little bit here, so we'll do what we can with what we've got. A nice play there, defensively stripping that one away as the A-Town Tornadoes will come away with it here. One point ball game, A-Town with it. Kennedy Quinn gets it to Haley Redding. Redding, the game high, nine points at half, gets it. Left wing, she's gonna shoot a three. Banks that one in, the bank open late here in Bushnell. And the lead is back up to two for A-Town. First time they've led since first quarter. Kicks it into the corner, baseline, driving Cruzan. Lays that one up with the left hand. Lexi Cruzan, she had seven points in the first half, although she dealt with foul trouble. She's at three fouls here in the game, so it'll be Interesting to watch her performance here, trying not to pick up that fourth foul as it goes to Taylor Ford. Top of the key, Caden Quinn. Kicks it to Redding, a pump fake. She drives inside, gets it free throw line jumper. That one, no good. And that one goes out of bounds. And it will be Indian basketball. We are tied, my scoreboard apologies. A little slow to update sometimes from time to time, so. I have to remember to click another button in order for it to update from time to time. But we're tied at 26. Lewis down with the basketball. Into the corner it goes Jolie McLaughlin. Picks up the ball. She might have got away with a travel, but it's a turnover nonetheless. Here's Kennedy Quinn, right elbow shot in transition. That one's up and good. Kennedy Quinn, she's got eight points. The star freshman, maybe that'll get her going. 6.15 to go here in the third. It's 28. 26. Into the corner, McLaughlin. She's got it. A nice play inside to come away with it. A left-handed shot. That one's no good by Cruzan. Gets her own rebound back. A lot of contact and a foul called. So Lexi Cruzan will go to the line. That is the first foul on A-Town here in this quarter. Lexi Cruzan with those nine points. Her first free throw is up and good. So Cruzan now with 10. She's the only player actually outside of Haley Redding who just went into double figures. Cruzan right behind her. She is at 11. We're tied at 28, six minutes to go here in the third. Right side it goes Emma Gunther. Gunther gets a screen, an offensive foul is called. A-Town head coach Brent Dugan, not a fan of that call. As he gets his word in to the official who made that call. What a ball game this has been. We got two more great quarters of basketball ahead of us. Smith gets it to Johnson. Into the corner, out of the wing. Driving is Wiegand, there's a two, that might have been a three actually. 
Oh, what an effort to try to get the save. Instead, it goes into the hands of A-Town. Two on two the other way. Kicks it to Gunther. Turns it around. Gets it to Ford. And a whistle. That's a late foul call. I thought he was going to call a travel, to be honest with you. And the official was looking over this direction for the foul call, but he needs to go to the scorer's table. And they're going to try to get the correct, the correct number that that foul is on. That is on Lexi Cruzan, and that is her fourth. Oh, you wondered when it was going to happen. Lexi Cruzan will check out of the ball game with four fouls. She's the leading scorer for the Indians. She's got 11 points. How long will she sit? That is the question. 5.25 to go here, third quarter. Kennedy Quinn, top of the key. She's going to shoot a three, and she's got it. Kennedy Quinn is heating up. The star freshman with 11 points. It's a three-point lead for A-Town. And getting it inside, McLaughlin, a nice play, cutting to the basket, laying that one up and in. Back and forth we go, 31-30. Five minutes to go here in the third. Gunther picks up the dribble, gets it to Redding, left side. Tried to get that one inside. That one bounces off the knee of one player. Didn't see who it was, and head coach Brent Dugan for A-Town gets a timeout called. We'll take a timeout with them. It's a full timeout, I believe. We're back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call here this evening. 4.51 to go here in the third quarter. Sectional semifinal game number two from Bushnell Prairie City High School. Good to have everybody along as the Lewistown Indians and the A-Town Tornadoes do battle. Lewistown had the halftime lead by one. Inside it goes, offensive rebound, Redding puts it back up and in. What a play out of the timeout. Haley Redding lays it back up and in. And A-Town back up by three. McLaughlin in the corner, gets it up top to Johnson. Now right side, it goes to Landry Smith. Left wing three on the way. Cruzan, excuse me, that's weakened. No good, offensive rebound comes out to Landry Smith. 4.20 to go, third quarter. Left side, it is weakened. Now back to McLaughlin. Good ball movement here by the Indians. Little turnaround, left-handed hook shot. That one goes in, and a foul. Abby Wiegand, what a beautiful play. She's up to five points in an old-fashioned three-point play. Up for grabs as Avery Stiegel will check in for Taylor Ford. 33-32, 4-10 to go here in the third. Wiegand still with that free throw opportunity. As Wiegand at the line, puts that one up and in. Abby Wiegand now with six. We're tied at 33. 4.05 to go here, quarter number three. Emma Gunther gets a screen from Quinn, gets it to Caden Quinn. She cuts to the basket, puts up a shot, a lot of contact, no call. And that one tipped out of bounds off the hands of Lewistown. A-Town will inbound the basketball. Emma Gunther gets it inside. Caden Quinn kicks it up top to Kennedy Quinn. Gets a screen. Quinn kicks it right wing. That's a three on the way. That one is off the front rim. No good. Offensive rebound again. That goes to Quinn. Left wing, three on the way. Kennedy Quinn. That's no good. Offensive rebound. Redding. And a foul is called. That will be on Lewistown. Abby Wiegand just picked up her third foul. That's the team's second. I put third. My apologies. 
3.38 to go here in the third. The inbounds pass comes to Gunther. Now back up top to Quinn. Kennedy Quinn crosses over, left side, gets it to Stiegel. And, oh boy, nearly a miscommunication there. Kennedy Quinn is able to save it. Gets it left side. Caden Quinn goes to the baseline. Now back up top to Kennedy. 3.15 to go. She'll shoot left wing three. Halfway down and out. Offensive rebound. Stiegel puts it back. That one no good. And the rebound comes to the Indians. 3.08 to go here. Third quarter. Here comes Landry Smith pushing the issue. A lot of contact. No call. Wow. Looked like she got slapped in the face on that one. Didn't get the call. 3.03 to go here in the third. It'll be Indian basketball. You know, these officials have been consistent. They've allowed a lot of contact in this game. Don't want them to get ticky-tack yet. And a whistle and a double dribble is called on Jolie McLaughlin. So a turnover back into the hands of A-Town. What a great crowd on hand here for this sectional semifinal. It's been a great back and forth between two red hot teams here in the state of Illinois. There's a nice steal. Landry Smith, two on two the other way. Off the steal, lays it up. That one's no good. Rebound goes to Stiegel. Gets it to Quinn, two on two the other way. That one stripped away by McKenna Johnson. What a great play by Johnson to stop that fast break opportunity. Wiegand, she's got it up top, gets it to McLaughlin, she drives. That one blocked away by Redding. Some great defense being played by both sides. Oh, that one thrown away. Here's Landry Smith in transition, lays it up, no good, but a foul. A-Town committing the turnover there a moment ago. Kennedy Quinn just picked up her fourth foul of the ball game. That is the team's fourth as well for A-Town. 2.13 to go here in the third. Landry Smith, she's got three points today. First free throw, rattles out, no good. Lewistown will be in the bonus the rest of the way, the last two minutes and 13 seconds of this third quarter. Landry Smith, second free throw. That one off the back rim, no good. Rebound goes to A-Town. Bringing it right to left in their home whites. Kennedy Quinn, right side, comes up top. Oh, she's got a wide open lane all the way to the basket, lays it up and in. Kennedy Quinn made that one look too easy. She turned on the burners as basically the Red Sea parted there. Goodness, Landry Smith kicks it. McKenna Johnson, the layup, no good. And the rebound comes out to Kennedy Quinn. Here she comes, gets it right side, Emma Gunther. Gunther gets it to Quinn. She's cutting to the basket, loses the handle, but a foul is going to be called on Jolie McLaughlin. Indian personal number That's actually on Landry Smith. My apologies. That's her third. And Lewis down. Got to watch it. They're going to run out of players. Timeout on the floor. A-Town wants to talk it over. A-Town down to two timeouts left. We're back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community. Uh, I'm from a farm family. And ultimately, I always wanted to practice in a place like that. And I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me. And the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. And welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call here this evening. Sectional semifinal here at Bushnell Prairie City High School. Illini Bluffs winning our earlier game this evening. 53 to 46. They will take on the winner of this game in the sectional championship game coming up on Thursday. Who will it be, A-Town or Lewistown? 
We got a lot of basketball ahead of us here. 139 left here in the third. A-Town with the basketball after a timeout. They're down to two timeouts left. Inside pass goes to Quinn, but it's tipped and stolen away. Nice play by the Indians. Here they come, Landry Smith. Oh, Moe, a lot of contact. A-Town wanted a jump ball, a whistle, and are they gonna call a foul? I don't know how you don't call a tie up in that situation. They are gonna call a foul. It's on A-Town, it'll be on Taylor Ford. That's her third. <clears throat> that is an interesting call. Looked like Kennedy Quinn got her hand on the basketball, which if you were, depending on the officials that you had, you certainly could have uh, seen a tie up there, but that is not the case. Landry Smith misses the first free throw, however. Minute and a half to go here in the third. As the second free throw up and good, Landry Smith gets the second. That makes it a one point ball game. Kennedy Quinn bringing it right to left. She's to the right wing, crosses over. Oh my goodness, what a play. Baseline no good, offensive rebound back into her hands, a whistle. And now a tie up is called. <laughs> Interesting, 118 to go here in the third. They call a tie up there, but they didn't call it on that previous possession. Okay. Like I said, this has been a good officiating crew though. Done a fantastic job throughout most of this ball game, being consistent at least. Inbounds pass past the timeline to Emma Gunther. Now they get it to Taylor Ford. Ford, free throw line, kicks it up to Kennedy Quinn. Kennedy Quinn trying to cross over, trying to beat her defender. Good defense by Landry Smith. Kicks it left side, Emma Gunther. Gunther kicks it, Taylor Ford, that's a two on the way, that one. Rattles around, no good, rebound, fought for, and eventually taken away by the Indians. 49 seconds to go, third quarter. Bringing it across is Wiegand. Wiegand to the baseline, that one blocked away, but a foul is called on Haley Redding. Abby Wiegand, that is the third foul on Haley Redding. Redding leading the way for A-Town with 14 points. Weekend with six as that first free throw rattles home and we're tied. Forty-three point one seconds to go here in the third, tied at 35. Second free throw also good by Weekend. She's up to eight and Lewis down back in front by one. Kennedy Quinn brings it across the timeline. Top of the key, she thought about it. Oh, cut into the basket was Taylor Ford. Just off her fingertips, out of bounds. So that'll be a turnover. Just a tick behind it looked like Taylor Ford on that play. Gets it left side. Now up top, it's Landry Smith. Left side, McLaughlin, 15 seconds to go. Top of the key, thought about shooting. Wiegand instead gets it to McLaughlin. 10 seconds, free throw line, drives, kicks it. McKenna Johnson, that's a three on the way. That one's no good, rebound. Falls into the hands of Ford, three seconds to go. Here's Kennedy Quinn, one second, has to get it up. That one at the buzzer, she gets it to go. It's Kennedy Quinn. A three as we end the third quarter. We got a good one, folks. Don't go anywhere. Fourth quarter coming up. A-Town leads by two. As you're watching TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential. With campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online, Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Start of our fourth quarter, about to get underway. Kennedy Quinn just a moment ago hitting a three right before the buzzer. And the A-Town Tornadoes, thanks to that three, 
lead this thing by two, but still a lot of basketball ahead of us. As Lewistown will start with the basketball, moving left to right, the Indians. Back and forth we go. We'll start with it. A trip to the sectional championship game on the line. Left side it goes McLaughlin. McKenna Johnson now with it. A nice play by McLaughlin to save that one from going out of bounds. Landry Smith, right side to Wiegand. Johnson picks up her dribble, <coughs> excuse me, gets it inside, driving all the way to the basket. Lays that one up and good. Isabel Bonney, haven't heard her from her much here in the ball game, but the Indians tie it up thanks to Bonney's shot. We're tied at 38, 7.25 to go here in the fourth. Cross-court pass goes to Gunther. Picks up the dribble, gets it inside to Redding. Redding takes it, left-handed layup, that one's up and good. Haley Redding tied for the team lead as she has got 16 points. 7.10 to go here in the fourth. There's a three on the way, McLaughlin, that one no good, rebound. Falls into the hands of Taylor Ford. One minute down here in the fourth, a trip to the sectional championship to take on Illini Bluffs on the line. Inside to Quinn, kicks it, Ford drives all the way to the basket, lot of contact, offensive foul is called on Taylor Ford. Caden Quinn will check back in for A-Town. A-Town with a two point lead, a timeout is called. And that'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. I got a comment in from Caitlin Welker. Coming from Small Town Sports, I can only imagine the pride in the hearts of all the parent volunteers and Park District coaches watching these games, these girls tonight. I mean, what a game we've got going on here tonight, folks. I mean, it has just been a great back and forth. And yes, these are two of the smaller districts that you're gonna see in Class 1A. A-Town and Lewistown, I mean, these girls are giving it their all. And the girls in the early game, gave it their all between Illini Bluffs and Anawan. I mean, that game was amazing. We saw a 10 point lead get wiped away and Illini Bluffs was able to hang on. And now these two small schools here in class 1A fighting for a chance to move on to the sectional championship. It has been good as advertised. 6.40 to go here in the fourth. Into the corner, McLaughlin kicks it. That one tipped away by Kennedy Quinn. It goes out of bounds. But I agree with you there, Caitlin. What a performance. What a night of basketball here. And we still got more basketball to go. 6.34 to go here in the fourth. Hopefully my voice holds up. <clears throat> right now it's struggling. Driving, losing the handle. Wiegand falls over. Fight still for the basketball. That one kicked out of bounds and it will be A-Town basketball. So Cruzan, Lexi Cruzan will check in. She's got four fouls. She has not played much here in this game because of that foul situation and yet she's still the team leader in scoring. Left wing three, Kennedy Quinn, that's no good. Gets her own rebound back. Haley Redding now with it. Drives, wide open shot, that one laid up and in. It's Haley Redding. <laughs> Haley Redding gives the A-Town Tornadoes a two possession lead, 42-38. Into the corner, McKenna Johnson, wide open three. That one didn't hit the rim, out of bounds, off the hands of the Indians. 5.53 to go here in the fourth. 42-38, A-Town with the lead. Kendi Quinn drives all the way to the baseline. What a great defensive play. That's out of bounds, off the hands of Lewistown. I didn't see who got their hands on it. I think it was Lexi Cruzan able to strip that one away. And it got wedged underneath the padding there on the pole here at Bushnell Prairie City High School. Quinn inbounds the ball. Stiegel got it. Left-handed shot. Wow, a lot of contact, no call. These officials are not calling anything. You gotta get basically mugged if you're gonna get a, th a foul call. There's a three! It's Jolie McLaughlin! And that brings this one back to within one. 5.22 to go here in the fourth. Kennedy Quinn, right wing, crosses over. 
Cross court pass inside Haley Redding driving, puts that one in and a foul! Haley Redding, she's got 20 and a big answer after that three. And that'll be the end of the day for Lexi Cruzan. She just picked up her fifth. That is a devastating foul for Lewistown. Cruzan, the leading scorer in this game for Lewistown anyway. And that one tipped away, nearly turned over. Lewistown able to get it back. No three point play for Redding. Free throw line it goes into the corner now. McLaughlin or three to tie, that's no good. 4.53 to go here in the fourth. Kennedy Quinn across the timeline. Nail biter indeed, Michelle. Right side, Quinn comes up top. Hands it off to Redding. To Caden Quinn, she thought about it. Goes to the free throw line, gets to Stiegel. Free throw line into the corner. Redding a wide open three from the corner. That one halfway down and out. Rebound comes to McKenna Johnson. She's going to slow it down as she didn't have any help. She kicks it cross court. Landry Smith for the tie. That one nearly banked in. Rebound comes out. Here comes Quinn. 4.15 to go here in the fourth. Quinn gets a screen, gets it to Redding, a right wing. She's going to shoot a three. That's Caden Quinn. That's no good. Stiegel had the rebound for a minute, and a whistle tie-up is called. Possession arrow will give it to the Tornadoes. Four minutes to go, the halfway mark of quarter number four. Inbounds pass to Haley Redding. Right side, Caden Quinn. <coughs> Two high intensity games. Hopefully my voice holds up for the rest of this one. Caden Quinn, top of the key. Gets it to Redding. Free throw line. Drives, backs down, turn around, shot. That one off the rim, no good. Out of bounds. That'll go back to the Tornadoes. 3.39 to go here in the fourth. Boy, we're seeing some close shots. Just aren't falling yet for both sides. Inbounds pass goes up top, back near the logo to Kennedy Quinn. Three-point game, Quinn kicks it to her cousin, Caden. Gets it now to Redding. Redding picks up her dribble. <coughs> Excuse me, looking for Kennedy Quinn, is able to get it to her. Neither team in much foul trouble here, only one foul apiece as, oh, coming in for that one. A lot of contact again. Wiegand comes away with it. Triple team at midcourt. Wiegand comes away with it. Into the corner, McLaughlin. Now up top, Landry Smith for the tie. That one is good. It's Landry Smith. And we are tied at 44. Under three minutes to go here in quarter. Number four. Gunther gets it to Stiegel. Kennedy Quinn, 2.42 to go, a free throw line. That's just a little hook shot, that one's no good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Lewistown and a foul is called on A-Town. Trying to stop the fast break. That foul will be on A-Town, it'll be on Emma Gunther. Taylor Ford will check into the ball game. Corey reacting, I imagine with the delay, I imagine you're reacting to the three by Landry Smith there a moment ago. Two and a half to go here in the fourth. Free throw line jumper on the way, that one no good by Bonnie. Rebound comes out to A-Town. Trip to the sectional championship game on Thursday, up for grabs. A bump, Caden Quinn's got it. Redding inside, or excuse me, now she drives inside. Goes to the basket, lays it up, no good. They're gonna say a foul on the floor by Lewistown. Jolie McLaughlin picks up the foul. I believe that was her third for Lewistown. 2.09 to go here in the fourth. Tie ball game here at 44. Kennedy Quinn 
Inside pass, Haley Redding, turn around, hook shot, a lot of contact, and there's finally a foul. Just haven't seen a lot of fouls here in this fourth quarter. I was wondering if that one was gonna get called, to be honest with you. <laughs> the way this is going, I wouldn't have been surprised if it wasn't. But Haley Redding to the line. She's got 20 points, make it 21. First free throw is good. 2.04 left here in the fourth. Haley Redding back to the line. One more, and she got it. 22 for Redding. It's back to a two-point lead. A-Town has not led this game by more than five. Lewis down led by nine for a while back in the second. Since then, it's been back and forth. Inside McKenna Johnson. Wow, I can't believe there wasn't a call there, but might be a situation of ball don't lie as that one goes out of bounds off the hands of A-Town, so it will be Lewistown basketball. Wow. I am just stunned with some of these no foul calls on both sides. I mean, either team can argue. A travel is called on Lewistown with 1.43 to go here in the fourth. Avery Stiegel will check in. Timeout is called by Lewistown. They are down to two as we'll take a timeout with them. It's a full timeout. We're back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Working at MDH feels special to me because I'm also from a small community like MDH, and I love to be able to care for communities like this and be able to give them high standards of excellence with medical care as possible. You know, some people like to take more of a medical approach to their care. Some people like to take more of a holistic and I just want to be able to make their plan of care as individualized as possible. Welcome back to SSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Fourth quarter, 143 to go here as we await who will play Illini Bluffs in the sectional championship game coming up on Thursday night here at Bushnell Prairie City High School. 46-44, both teams are just getting mugged right now and no fouls are being called. I mean, this is just, <clears throat> I can't believe, I'm kind of surprised when a foul gets called. That, that's just the way this game has been. It has been evenly officiated in that regard. They've been consistent, but boy, you got to basically get mugged in order to get a foul call. And even then you may not get a foul call. Into the corner, Stiegel gets it up top to Gunther. Nice pass, Redding cutting to the basket, lays it up and in. Haley Redding with a massive basket for the A-Town Tornadoes. They lead by four, 123 to go here in the fourth. Johnson, she's got it up top. That one tipped back by Gunther, back into the hands of Johnson. Now getting it to Wiegand, Wiegand. Right wing, a three on the way for Bonnie. That one rattles out, no good. Rebound goes to the Tornadoes. 105 to go here from Bushnell. Kennedy Quinn is grabbed and fouled. That will be the fourth foul on A Town, as they may be, or excuse me, on Lewistown, excuse me. As it looks like Lewistown going to try to play the foul game here. 102 to go here in the fourth, a two possession ball game. That one tipped into the backcourt, so no over and back. Gunther has it, kicks it to Quinn, cutting to the basket, extra pass, Caden Quinn gonna take the shot, and she's gonna hit it! Caden Quinn with her second basket of the night, and it's the biggest one, arguably, of the season. We got a six-point game, timeout on the floor. We'll be back after this, TSSR Game Time Live. Brought to you by MDH. Dry needling is where you insert a filiform needle into a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, um, sometimes a bone, and it promotes blood flow and circulation so that it heals that particular painful area. Welcome back. TSSR Game Time Live brought to you by MDH. Still a two possession ball game, but a big bucket just a moment ago for Caden Quinn as she hits a left elbow jumper from about eight feet and is able to give the A-Town Tornadoes a six point lead, 50 to 44, 49.6 seconds to go. Winner of this game advances to the sectional championship 
and will take on Illini Bluffs, who won earlier tonight, beating Anawan. Lewistown's got to hurry. They get the ball inbounds. McLaughlin brings it across the timeline. 45 seconds to go. Wiegand, left wing, kicks it up top. Landry Smith going to shoot a left wing three on the way. That's no good. Fight for the rebound. Over the back call on Lewistown. And that might have been the nail in the coffin for the Indians. Indian Caden Quinn going to the line. Your girl, we will get the student section potentially a little bit later on here, maybe when they're celebrating. If A-Town is able to hang on as the free throw is up and good, Caden Quinn makes it a three possession ball game with 36.8 seconds to go. And the second free throw for Quinn is up and good. Eight point game, Lewistown has to hurry. 33 seconds to go. McKenna Johnson, free throw line, drives, kicks it out. McLaughlin, open corner three on the way! She gets that one to go! Jolie McLaughlin! A lot of contact and a foul is called. As that will be on Lewistown. 22.6 seconds to go, 52-47. You know, believe it or not, you're a girl. They have not really been going that crazy. They're calling a technical foul on Lewistown. And now Kennedy Quinn is gonna go to the line and shoot two free throws. Quinn has got 16 here tonight as the free throw rattles around and goes in. She's up to 17. So I think we are going to see Two free throws from Quinn and then two more free throws potentially after the technical as Lewistown is over the limit. Second free throw is good, 54-47. Now they're just going to get the possession. 22.6 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. As a timeout is called, a full timeout by head coach Brent Dugan. What a ball game this has been. The A-Town Tornadoes got off to a 7-2 start. Lewistown came roaring back. They led 21-9 at, or 21-12, excuse me. Led by nine, actually led by 10 at one point here in the ball game. Or no, that was a nine point game. I've got the last game in my mind. <laughs> it's been a long night of basketball. But they led by nine. But the A-Town Tornadoes were able to cut that lead down to just one before halftime. And since then, the A-Town Tornadoes have pulled away. Been a great back and forth, however, but the fourth quarter has belonged to the Tornadoes. They lead this thing by seven, 22.6 seconds to go. And you kind of got to wonder if it was that three-pointer at the end of the third quarter to give the A-Town Tornadoes a two-point lead, 38-36. You just wonder if that was something that really was the turning point of this ball game. In in inbounds pass goes to Haley Redding, and a foul is called. Steve saying another great fourth quarter. Steve, yes it has been. A great fourth quarter and a great season for both sides as the Lewistown Indians. As the fifth team or the fifth seed here in this sectional, you look at some of the teams that they had to knock off to get to this point, the sectional semifinal. They knocked off the three seed in North Fulton. They also beat Havana in a really dominating fashion as the first free throws up and good. Haley Redding up to 25. They beat Havana in very dominant fashion. Two for two from the line for Haley Redding. She's at 26. <clears throat> Lewistown gave it everything they had, but it looks like it's gonna be not enough. 21.8 seconds to go. Here comes Lewistown, down by nine, 56-47. McLaughlin kicks it into the corner. Driving the baseline, laying that one up. That one's no good, and the rebound goes to A-Town. 10 seconds to go, and the crowd will come to their feet. Lewistown will not foul, and the A-Town Tornadoes will advance to the sectional championship game on Thursday night, where they will take on the Illini Bluffs. 
56-47. A-Town will advance. And Illini Bluffs, they're gonna be looking for revenge as A-Town beat them in their own holiday tournament just after Christmas. And Haley Redding announced as the game high 26 points in the winning effort for the A-Town Tornadoes. What an unbelievable ball game. What a night of basketball here in Bushnell. The Bushnell Prairie City Spartans have been a great host here and they will be a great host coming up on Thursday night for the championship game and we'll have that championship game right here on TSSR Game Time Live brought to you by MDH. I'm gonna take a quick 30 second timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at the numbers and hope to talk to head coach Brent Dugan of the A-Town Tornadoes as he's gonna go in and celebrate in the locker room but we hope to talk to him here in the post game. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back, TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed on the call here as we are wrapping up what was an unbelievable night of basketball here from both games. I mean, both games were nail biters down to the later portions of the fourth quarter. And this is actually the widest margin of the night as Anawan fell in the first game, 53-46. Kind of a similar ball game here. 56-47, the A-Town Tornadoes knocking off the Lewistown Indians and they will advance to Thursday night's championship game, the sectional championship where they will take on Illini Bluffs who I mentioned won earlier tonight. What a ball game though. Uh, really, you know, for the two-headed monster that I talked about for A-Town here. Got off to a very slow start. The shots weren't falling, but shooters, they just continue to shoot. That's what they do, and they were able to continue to get their shots, and they started falling in the second half. Haley Redding finishing with a game-high 26 points. Kennedy Quinn, the star freshman, she really struggled there in that first half, but she still finishes this ball game with... 18 points, seven points for Caden Quinn. Emma Gunther finished with two points. That two points was a huge shot at the end of the first half. That shot that went in just before we went to halftime. We thought it was a three, they called it a two. Either way, that was a big bucket there for Emma Gunther. So she finishes with two points. Taylor Ford with three points from the free throw line. And what a ball game for the A-Town Tornadoes who are moving on. Now let's take a look at the Lewistown Indians. They're scoring breakdown. Lexi Cruzan finishing this ball game with 11 points, but I mean, that was in very limited time as she finishes uh, with fouling out of this ball game. And she fouled out rather early in this ball game in the fourth quarter. So she was in foul trouble a majority of the ball game. Lexi Cruzan though, leading the way for Lewistown as she finishes with 11 points. Jolie McLaughlin uh, finishing with 10 points, eight points for Abby Wiegand, seven points for McKenna Johnson, seven points for Landry Smith, and four points for Isabel Bonney. And I mean, even though you look at the scoreboard and you see a nine point game, you I mean, this game was not, it, it wasn't decided until the very end of this ball game. Don't get, don't, don't, don't kid yourselves. I mean, this game was just constantly back and forth. Every time A-Town would hit a shot, 
Lewistown would come down and hit a shot, get a defensive stop, and then they would go on a run. And then when they needed it, A-Town got a big bucket, and then they were able to go on a miniature run. But in the end, the A-Town Tornadoes pulling away late. This ball game was 11 to nine after one quarter of basketball. At the half, it was a one point game, 24-23. End of the third quarter, which we saw a buzzer beater from Kennedy Quinn. One of the great shots I've seen her hit all season long. And then fourth quarter, A-Town eventually pulls away, outscoring the Indians 18 to 11. I'll take one, thank you very much. They're handing out free popcorn here at Bushnell Prairie City. I'm gonna get one for my grandma who's sitting right next to me. There you are, grandma. A lot of people still out here celebrating, obviously, and we're hoping to talk to head coach Brent Dugan. He's standing to my left, but he is talking to the radio affiliates who were covering this game, WRAM. Good to have this game on the radio. I'm sure that sounded very, very good. I mean, what a ball game here. And I cannot stress that enough. I mean, when your announcer starts losing his voice after just two basketball games, usually I can get through four basketball games before my voice starts to deteriorate. But with the action that we got here tonight, those two games were enough for my voice. And I'm going to have to go home and suck on some cough drops and try to get my voice back for Thursday because we're in for a doozy, folks. And again, it is a rematch of a game that we saw earlier this year. It was a very low scoring game <coughs> against Illini Bluffs and A-Town, a game for the championship of the Tiger, what is it, the Tiger Classic, they call that, uh, the Illini Bluffs holiday tournament that they hosted this year. And it was a, a close game, a very defensive minded ball game. And we'll see if it is a similar ball game. I mean, Illini Bluffs, you saw them earlier tonight here on this floor. You saw just how good they can play defense. And it is just, it, it, it is going to be interesting how they're going to be able to deal with the two-headed monster that is Kennedy Quinn and Haley Redding. I'm excited for it. I can't wait to call this one. I'm going to be doing it solo again, so bear with me. Uh, but uh, if you're a fan of either side, looking forward to that one. Uh, we will have the call here on TSSR Game Time Live. 7 o'clock, that one tips off on Thursday. And we'll be on the air probably a few minutes beforehand, probably about seven, eight minutes beforehand, covering starting lineups and all that fun stuff. But with everything being said, as they are fans waving at the uh, camera, I think, up here. Got fans. Still celebrating there for A-Town out there on the floor. I don't see any Illini Bluffs people here, which is kind of surprising. You think that their fans would want to scout there a little bit, but that was not the case. <laughs> the Illini Bluffs fans, they wanted to get home. And I, just, I can't say I blame them. It's been a long day. And they're going to get their focus pinned towards the A-Town Tornadoes. A-Town and Illini Bluffs, 7 o'clock here at Bushnell Prairie City High School on Thursday for a chance to advance to the Brimfield Super Sectional. That is where the winner will head. I looked it up, so <laughs> I think that is correct. They are heading to Brimfield, uh, the winner of this sectional. I'm looking forward to it uh, and what should be an amazing, amazing end of the year, no matter how you look at it. More comments coming in. Let's take a look at some of those comments. A great team effort, Joy says for A-Town, it certainly was. Uh, K. Ann Andrews uh, celebrating, go A-Town. And then Steve says, get Kennedy up here. If I could get Kennedy up here, I would. I see her right now. But I think she's celebrating with her classmates or her school friends, which I, you know, if I had another hand, I would have her, somebody down on the floor and uh, see if she can come up here. but. That is not what I have here. I'm a one-man crew with my, outside of my, uh, my camera guy, Dylan. Dylan helping me out here this evening. I appreciate you, Dylan. You did a great job, and let's do that again on Thursday. Let's, let's have another great game like that. What do you say? He's shaking his head yes. He is just as excited as I am. He was trying to make some calls here during this ball game. I mean, what a weird game. I, there were certainly some foul calls that we could have seen, but 
didn't get those calls, but that's neither here nor there. Still a very, very good ball game nonetheless. Steve, I appreciate the, uh, <laughs> he says it's cool, it's cool. Maybe, maybe if A-Town were to win on Thursday night, maybe we can get Kennedy up here for you. I'll see what I can do. I'll, I might put a, a little bug in the ear of head coach Brent Dugan who's still talking to the radio guys. I mean, how much more do they got to talk about? I mean, they got a lot to talk about. Let's not kid ourselves. There's a lot to talk about here from Bushnell Prairie City High School. Sectional semifinal. Game one goes to Illini Bluffs, 53-46. Lily Lukowiak, whose name I'm going to forget between now and then. Lily Lukowiak finishing with 26 points for Illini Bluffs, also getting 10 points for Annabelle Fortin. Those are going to be the two names to watch for Illini Bluffs coming up on Thursday. <clears throat> and for the A-Town Tornadoes, of course, it's the two-handed monster we talked about, Kennedy Quinn and Haley Redding leading the way. Haley Redding with a game-high 26 points as well. So those were the two high scorers in the ball game, Lily Lakowiak and Haley Redding, both finishing with 26 points. And you know what? I'm going to take one more time out. When we come back, we'll talk to head coach Brent Dugan. I need a break. i got to give my voice a little bit of a break before we talk to head coach Brent Dugan. We'll talk to him in just a moment. You're watching TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to SSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. Wyatt Reed wrapping up here at Bushnell Prairie City High School as the A-Town Tornadoes moving on to the sectional championship game where they will take on the Illini Bluffs Tigers in what should be an excellent ball game Thursday night, 7 o'clock. We'll have that one for you here on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. As head coach of the A-Town Tornadoes girls basketball team, Brent Dugan, done with his radio obligations. Now he's made his way over to us here on YouTube, and we appreciate him taking some time here. I know it's a late night here, Coach, but... What a great night it was. Congratulations. You're moving on to the sectional championship game. What a ball game it was here tonight in Bushnell. Yeah, you've seen us here the last month, a month and a half there, Wyatt. You, you know how our script is. We never do anything easy, and we always get out to slow starts. And uh, why wouldn't we do it that way tonight? But uh, <laughs> I thought our half um, second quarter, late second quarter, that 8-0, 9-0 run that we did, uh, Emma has a big toe on the on the, on the the line, or otherwise that's yeah. a tie ball game. Um, but – I thought the girls did a great job of gritting that out. We had a little bit of the flu bug, um, head colds going through our system. And oh, no. I thought we looked a little bit uh, lethargic, not a little bit, a lot of it. Um, that makes it tough. And they gritted it out, and they did a lot of good things there at the end that was leave it out on the floor because coach, coach wants us to. And when you got girls like that, that's, that's a, that speaks volumes for them. And Kennedy Quinn and Caden Quinn, I thought as freshmen in the big moment, played outstanding tonight. I know Caden battled some foul trouble, but she kept balls alive. She's she's anytime she guards you, she's got those condor arms, so she gets deflections, and all that stuff that she did for us as a freshman. I thought Avery played real well off the bench, and then our three juniors. I mean Haley Redding, you talk about gritting it out. I thought she did fantastic, especially yeah. there, especially there at the end. Um, just. We could isolate her in the, in the low post, and I think that was kind of the key of the game. And, and she made some hellacious cuts and nice passing. Uh, also, that read play that Kennedy, um, the fans probably don't know this, but Kennedy made a read, kicked it over to Emma, and there's a back cut happening on the back side. Uh, I probably just told a scouring report on something, but, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, Potentially, yes. Yeah, YouTube doesn't go that far, does it? Oh, uh, you never know. You never know. 
But anyways, I thought that was a heck of a play and a heck of a read by a freshman point guard. I mean, we got 1,400 views <laughs> over the course of this broadcast, so I'm sure somebody caught that, but you never know. Um, I mean, you, you brought it up there just a moment ago, that run at the end of the second quarter where you guys were down 21-12. to 12, You finish on an 11-3 to 3 run. Uh, I mean, what kind of started working for you guys? I mean, it, it could <clears throat> easily just be shots were falling, but what were you guys doing different defensively that you were slowing down the Lewistown team, who at the time looked like their offense was going to be unstoppable. Yeah, we, um, well, 20 getting in foul trouble helped out. 21 getting in a little bit of foul trouble as well helped out. And we just attacked them with the dribble with Kennedy out front. I thought that was the key. But that also when they did that, they kind of laid off her more. And they were letting her get around the corner. And I told her, I said, keep driving because three people pay attention to you. That means the other two or three or four on the, on the, on the outside are going to be penetrating and kicking as well. I thought Haley got loose for a shot. Emma got loose right there, right at the buzzer for a shot. I thought all those were good set plays. Um, and, and obviously, you're in set plays all day long, and X's and O's is a good coach. It's not good coaching when they don't execute it, and they did that very, very well tonight. We're talking to the head coach of the A-Town Tornadoes, Brent Dugan, joining us here. Uh, the A-Town Tornadoes advancing to the sectional championship game on Thursday, where they will take on Illini Bluffs. We'll talk about that matchup a little bit later on. But, you know, it was that two-headed monster that we've talked about all season long. You and I, Coach, we've mentioned them many times. I've said many times that if – uh, if, if Kennedy wasn't on your roster, Haley Redding would be the star of the show, and she showed tonight why that is the case. She put up 26 points for you guys. Kennedy hit that amazing, amazing buzzer beater at the end of the third quarter. That felt like it was the changing point of this ball game, the turning point for you guys where everything started going right. Do you feel like that was the same way, oh, that shot at the end of the third? Absolutely, and that's what leaders do. They step forward, and they make big shots, and they make big plays. And getting that off the rim and realizing what the clock situation was and getting it up the court. More importantly, we I don't want to say we practice that, but she knows from one side of the court to the other how much time she has. I felt like she didn't rush that. She just she's done that a million times over. You could just I mean, re reality probably not, but reality maybe because she has great work ethic and she's in the gym all the time. Hopefully she's going home and getting in bed right now. But oh. you never know about her and her dad. They may, <laughs> they may slip to the gym later, so you just never know. Well, and it helps that she's a track star there as well. Her blazing speed was the re reason that she was able to get into position and make that shot. Kennedy Quinn finishing this ball game with 18 points by my count. Um, as the A-Town Tornadoes again advancing 56 to 47. And you mentioned it, you getting number 20, Alexi Cruzan, who felt like she was the leader of that Lewistown team. Uh, getting her in foul trouble early, she had three fouls in the first half, picked up that fourth early in the third quarter. It just looked like that threw them off. Was that part of the game plan, getting her in foul trouble? Well, yeah, it was, but uh, obviously her isolating the post on Taylor Ford. I mean, Coach, Coach McLaughlin, Coach Bennett, they've been there, done that, and they did a nice job of isolating uh, Cruzan on our, our smaller power forward there. But our help side was poor there, and now we'll clean that up, and I don't understand why that didn't happen. But that's on me, and I'll, I'll take full responsibility of that. But they, they had a nice game plan and how they were isolating Cruzan on the low post, and we knew a little bit of that would happen, um, but I didn't think it, think it would to that extent. Talking to the head coach of the A-Town Tornadoes, Brent Dugan. One more question here, Coach. I know it's a late night here, so we'll, uh, we'll let you go. But um, as we've talked about you and I talked about a little bit yesterday when we were in a town uh, doing the boys game we were watching the boys game anyway but um, we were talking a little bit about either way if you guys were able to win it was going to be a rematch with a team that you beat earlier in the season and you know Anawan and the Illini Bluffs their top 10 teams all season long Illini Bluffs moves on. You beat them at their holiday tournament over the Christmas time. I know a lot has changed between Christmas time and now, but what can we expect on Thursday night here in Bushnell? Well, um, I don't want to tell all my secrets here, Why? Good try. You, you tried to get me to bite I on that. You. Good I job. Get you. you tried to get me to bite on that hook. No, I, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of questions to either team right now other than I'm sure they got a couple rabbits that they can pull out of their hat. So do we. Uh, I've been working on a few things, but I will say this. They got a senior dominated lineup. They got a big lineup. They're long. And they do they they have some things that will cause us some issues. And they did back uh, just around Christmas time. Um, I'm just hoping we get well and I hope that we can execute our plays and there's things that work. I'm sure they'll look at that film and they'll take a take a take a take that away from us. I really feel that um, it, it just comes down to their star players and our star players doing kind of what happened tonight and foul trouble might be an issue either way. 
And if that happens, obviously, then the coach has got to coach a little better and a little harder. But uh, other than that, I really see uh, Lionel Bluffs just the experienced team in this, and obviously they're supposed to be here. They're supposed to be a second championship. They're the one seed. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of people that said that, you know, with us getting the sixth seed, they had a lot of people, had a lot of doubters on whether A-Town could get there and do the thing. And, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. That's that's the way it is. <laughs> I might have used it for a pregame or a, a post, bit, yeah. post game. I'm just probably foreshadowing that a little bit. But that's the way it goes. I mean, and, and if they doubt you, then you got to earn that respect somehow, some way. And, and yeah, we we did nothing but tick them off <laughs> over Christmas when uh, they were supposed to win that championship as a two seed, and, and we came in and got it. But uh, I expect a little bit different team, a little hungrier team, and we'll see what happens on Thursday night. Should be a good one. Thursday night, we'll have that one for you here on TSSR Game Time Live, brought to you by MDH. 7 o'clock tip-off, the sectional championship game. Illini Bluffs taking on the A-Town Tornadoes. We appreciate the head coach of the A-Town Tornadoes, Brent Dugan, joining us here uh, in the post game. But that's going to do it for our stream here tonight. So we're going to wrap things up, and we will talk to you again on Thursday. We'll be on the air about 10 minutes till, and we look forward to having uh, a wonderful sectional championship game between the Tornadoes and the Tigers. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks to my cameraman, Dylan, here tonight. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll talk to you on Thursday. Thanks,